One drug maker that's had a fabulous year is Sanofi India. The stock has gained nearly 40% to hit record highs. Now, is this just a symptom of the rally in MNC Pharma or does Sanofi have something more to offer? Darshan Mesta here with a closer look at Sanofi's business. Uh, Darshan, tell us. Yeah, so basically MNC Pharma have been doing well. You know, we, we spoke about it uh, uh, quite a few times that, you know, MNC Pharma is uh, doing well compared to the generics uh, because the numbers are doing well. And the big uh, move, it's up almost 62% uh, in the last 12 months. It's trading at record highs. So we just do a deep dive analysis of what is the reason that uh, Sanofi has been doing well uh, uh, compared to the other ph pharma companies here. So that's a deep down. Basically, just to get a sense, 74% of the business that Sanofi has is the domestic business 26 percent is export and export is basically to its own sister companies uh, in 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 the global markets now within domestic 64 percent is branded 10 percent is institutional or OTC so the, they have a high quality of uh, branded drugs that are there that is positive and 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 the third breakup that we want to do is within branded only 18 percent is within the NLEM which means that price any kind of price revision can only happen in this 46 percent of it is non NLEM where they can take price hikes that will come in. So this is the revenue contribution that we've seen as far as Sanofi India is concerned. The other trend is that the revenue growth has been rather strong. strong from it, Remember, it follows a calendar year. So from 2014, uh, when the revenues was uh, almost 1,900 crores, they've come up to almost 2,500 crores. And in the first half, they've done 1,300 crores, which will mean that if you annualize it, it will be in excess of 2,600 crores because usually the third quarter uh, is the strongest that uh, Sanofi has. So the number probably will exceed. Even if you're looking at the profit number this time around, it will exceed what it did last time around. And the margin trends has improved drastically for Sanofi, given some of the products from levels of 17%. Now it's moved all the way to 23%. And remember, the third quarter is the strongest, so probably the EBITDA margins will be elevated for Sanofi. So that's the, that's the trend that we're seeing. The big play that it has is basically the diabetes play. First of all, uh, it is ahead of the market uh, in terms of the diabetes market in India with its flagship product called Lantis. Uh, there is a lot of shift that is happening from human insulin to modern insulin and that is where Sanofi scores. A significant amount of cases of diabetes are there in India and the market is extremely vast for, di for diabetes in India uh, and that is where Sanofi, Sanofi will gain. And these are some of the key products that Sanofi has uh, that will aid you know growth for the company going ahead. The second big play that is there for Sanofi uh, is uh, basically the institutional and over-the-counter. So it has uh, pr products across therapies that works for them and they undertook a big restructuring exercise as far as this segment is concerned which for which over the next few quarters uh, Neeraj you will see uh, results come into play. Oh interesting so Darshan um, the <coughs> the benefits and the challenges that lie ahead for Sanofi and if there is any way in which you can compare Sanofi versus some of the related peers. Yeah so basically uh, we, let, let's take a look at some of the factors that uh, are working for Sanofi India. Uh, the first factor is that you know there is growth mar expected in the high margin product so that is something uh, that you know we spoke about how diabetes is doing. Uh, they recently launched the Combiflan IC, uh, IC relief pain. Uh, Combiflan is one of the other flagship products and that is ramping up very very well and there could be more potential ramp up that will come in that will aid revenues for the company. Uh, they have an in-house uh, manufacturing capacity that is even backward integration. So the margins compared to the other MNCs here is much better for Sanofi. The other factor is that possible price hike for products that are outside the NLEM. So they have a very small portfolio of their branded products, uh, which was 18%, which is uh, uh, only which is NLEM. So government can interfere only in this. The vast majority of their uh, you know, branded portfolio uh, cannot be under NLEM and they can take price hikes there if the products are doing well. And new products and extension of the current portfolio is something that the management has indicated and that is clearly working for Sanofi going ahead. Obviously with this, uh, uh, the other factor that, uh, you know, is that, you know, it is paying dividends since 2007, steady dividend paying, sometimes it pays dividends twice a year and, and there may so many years where they have paid dividends thrice a year. So, so, so that is something, uh, the dividend
dividend yield is good and that is something that benefits. Obviously, with all the benefits comes risk. First of all, is that you know, there is intensifying portfolio competition in the insulin segment where Sanofi is extremely strong and export is mainly to group companies. Now, one of the company group companies which it export has been divested from Sanofi. They have a five-year contract to export company, but post five years, you know, that company can select to take products from some other company and not Sanofi. And more drugs in the NLEM could, uh, more any kind of curbs could actually be a little bit of problem for Sanofi going ahead. So that is something, uh, the risk that you need to watch out for. As far as the return ratios are concerned, very strong ROA, very strong ROE as far as the pharma company is concerned. And valuations 34 times on a, on a FY19 PE and uh, 20 times on a, twi or 28 times on an FY20 uh, PE as per the Bloomberg. Now, if you're comparing it to, you know, what has happened as far as the peer is concerned, it, it is one of the cheapest stocks in the MNC space, if you're looking at it, and it's the one that has risen the least. So, the potential that, you know, Sanofi has compared to the peers at this point of time seems to be higher because the, it hasn't moved. It has risen 40% YTD, but compared to something like an Abbott or a Pfizer, which have moved up much higher and are much expensive, Sanofi trades at a lower P multiple. So, that's the trend. Uh, analyst ratings, uh, obviously, Obviously, uh, bullish trends, uh, eight company, eight analysts track it. Uh, uh, seven of them have a buy rating. Uh, one of them has a neutral rating. But remember, the counter has run up significantly. So the Bloomberg return potential is a negative 5%. But analysts seem to be bullish on the counter.